Hi all, in this video we can see about gastric emptying. So gastric emptying can be asked uh, as a part of an essay question or as a short essay on its own. So we will see what are the different points that we can write when such a question is asked. So first of all, what is the definition of gastric emptying? So we know that after the food reaches the uh, stomach, after it passes through the esophagus, it reaches the stomach. And once it reaches the stomach, the stomach will have a motility of its own. Or there is a gastric motility, which the main function of which is to mix the content with the acids as well as to grind them into smaller particles. And after that, it is sequentially squirted out into the next segment that is the duodenum. So this process by which this slow control process by which the chyme is transferred into the duodenum and the jejunum is called gastric emptying. And this mainly occurs by the pumping action of the pylorus. So here we've got the pylorus and the antrum. So we've got a pumping action of the pylorus which slowly empties the chyme into the duodenum. And normally the gastric emptying time for solids is around 4 to 6 hours. So this is meant by gastric emptying. Basically it's a movement of chyme from the stomach to the, to, to the duodenum which is a slow control process which works with the help of the pyloric pump. So what is the mechanism of gastric emptying? So once the food reaches the stomach, there will be a peristaltic contraction that begins in the, in the body of the stomach. So there will be a wave of peristalsis that begins in the body. It will travel down toward the pyloric area. See, you can see that it's traveled down and then there will be a strong antral contraction. This, this peristaltic contraction which began at the center of the stomach, by the time it reaches the antrum, it will be much more powerful. And But what happens is now the pyloric sphincter is closed. So basically the, the chyme will uh, reach the antrum and then it will go back. So that is called retropulsion. So here you can see that the chyme has moved back due to the effect of this antral contraction. And this so these movements will actually help in the proper mixing and grinding of the chyme. And once it is properly mixed, the pyloric sphincter will partially open so that well ground particles can now be squirted to the next segment. So basically, it doesn't. It, the pyloric sphincter doesn't open fully; is only partially opened, so that only well ground particles can go into the next segment. So this is the mechanism of gastric emptying. So first we have the peristaltic contractions. It begins in the middle of the stomach, pushes the foot towards the antrum. Contraction increases near the pylorus, and there'll be weak contraction in the fundus and the body. Why should there be weak contraction in the fundus and body? Well, that is because when there is here the first of all the muscle layers are thin so there will be weak contractions only in the fundus and body this is important because it will prevent the reflex we don't want food to go back into the esophagus no so this will prevent the reflex not only that it will act like a reservoir it can uh, take up the varying amount of meals that we may have so that is why we have weak contractions in the upper part of the stomach and here the major mixing takes place in the antrum Next, we have the antral contraction. So, as I said, the peristaltic contraction becomes more when it comes to the antrum. It mixes food with the gastric juice. Pyloric sphincter is closed, so the food returns to the stomach body. And this contributes to thorough grinding and mixing of the food. So, next is retropulsion and the antral pump. So, here in retropulsion, there is rapid antral contraction which forces the chyme back to the stomach body. It grinds large particles into smaller ones and then the pyloric sphincter partially opens allowing small amounts of chyme into the duodenum in squirts. So this is the mechanism of gastric emptying. So the importance of gastric emptying is as I said first of all it is thin muscle layers in the fundus and body so it will have weak contractions which is useful because it will prevent reflux as well as act as a reservoir. Secondly the gastric contains layer by density. What does that mean? See, the fat will form an oily layer on top so that fat in general will slow, slower the emptying uh, than it will have slower emptying than carbs and proteins. Secondly, the liquids will have, uh, liquids will empty faster because liquids can flow around the solid mass and enter the antrum and thus have faster emptying than solids. So I just mentioned this because this is the basis for our next topic which is regulation of gastric emptying. So, 
there should be somebody to tell the pyloric sphincter when to open and when to close right it is only when the uh, it depends on many factors so what are the different uh, factors that regulate gastric emptying so we've got neural factors as well as hormonal factors by neural factors mainly we know vagus nerve is an important nerve which is uh, uh, important in relation to the gastric physiology so vagal stimulation will promote emptying we know that parasympathetic system in general will uh, help in digestion so here it promotes emptying what about sympathetic system sympathetic system will inhibit emptying remember sympathetic system is for fight or flight so it does not it does it will not uh, allow gastric emptying it will inhibit gastric emptying but actually the role of neural factors are much less in gastric emptying the most important factors are the hormonal factors so which all hormones are involved in the regulation of gastric emptying it is mainly the duodenal and jejunal hormones which are cholecystokinin uh, gip which is gastric intestinal peptide and secretin all the three hormones will inhibit gastric emptying so when we say regulation of gastric emptying it is the neural and the hormonal factors so what are the factors affecting gastric emptying so that will depend on what you eat and what hormones are secreted based on what you eat okay so first of all acid in duodenum whenever there is acid in, see when the gastric contents uh, first reach the duodenum it is acidic in nature because there is lot of acid in the stomach so first when it first reaches the duodenum it is acidic so when you have a low ph in the duodenum that time you will have decreased gastric emptying now this is because of the release of the hormone secretin secretin will actually inhibit antral contraction and stimulates the pyloric sphincter so that it tells uh, the stomach no need of any more gastric emptying for the time being secondly products of fat digestion so fatty acids if present will inhibit gastric emptying and which hormone will mediate this part it is mediated by cck and gip now osmolality of the duodenal content so suppose it is a hypertonic solution in that case it will inhibit gastric emptying via osmoreceptors and what about products of protein digestion here the peptides and amino acid will release gastrin now this gastrin hormone has got a dual role to play when it comes to gastric emptying gastrin actually increases antral contraction but also constricts pyloric sphincter so when because it increases antral contraction we can say that okay maybe it uh, helps in gastric emptying but it also constricts pyloric sphincter so it's got a dual role in case of gastric emptying when gastrin is taken alone and what about meal volume see if you are taking larger meals obviously it is going to take a long time to empty and suppose it is liquids that we are having it will have faster empty so the meal volume as well as what you eat whether it's solid or liquid that also determines the empty and next point is duodenal stretching so when chyme stretches the duodenum it activates the entrogastric reflex which thereby inhibit emptying so in general as i said whenever acid enters the duodenum will say no whenever the duodenum stretches again the duodenum will say no so these are the different factors that affect gastric emptying so so thus we've seen at least six factors that uh, affect gastric emptying there is acid in duodenum products of fat digestion osmolality of duodenal content products of protein digestion mean volume and duodenal stretching so now for some applied aspects what what are the different causes for dysfunction of gastric emptying so either there can be a delayed gastric emptying or there can be a rapid gastric emptying so what are the different causes for delayed gastric emptying this can be due to autonomic neuropathy like in diseases like diabetes mellitus you can have autonomic neuropathy which in turn can cause delayed gastric emptying similarly vagotomy we had said that vagus nerve actually stimulates gastric emptying so whenever there is vagotomy that is when you are cutting off the vagus nerve you will have you have decreased gastric emptying because vagus actually promotes gastric emptying next hypertrophic pyloric stenosis hypertrophic pyloric stenosis means the pyloric sphincter is hypertrophic that means it's thickened and so it does not open well and thus you can have delayed gastric emptying so what are the different causes for rapid gastric emptying it can be because of increased vagal activity or even uh, due to action of hormones like hyperthyroidism because thyroxine can stimulate gastric emptying and thus it can in hyperthyroidism you can have rapid gastric emptying so thus if a short essay is asked on gastric emptying you can write about the definition the mechanism and maybe draw these four diagrams to show the mechanism 
in regulation write about neural and hormonal regulation and uh, factors affecting the gastric emptying those six points regarding the uh, meal and all and finally you can complete the answer with applied aspects so i hope this video was useful for you thank you